Welcome back to the Arnie Lang Show. My first guest, brilliant guy, a guy I've known for a while. When I first got on the Howard Stern Show, I got invited by Robin out for Howard's dinner. Uh, so his birthday. A, uh, his, his birthday, yeah. 50th, dinner, right? Dinner first. No, he was like uh, 47-ish. It was the first time, the first year I was on the show. And uh, this was like uh, January of 02 or something like that. And uh, Robin said, we're going to a great restaurant uh, with this great chef, this great young chef. And a Union Pacific, right? Union Pacific, Union that's Pacific. right, yeah, yeah. And we went to go eat at this place, and my God, it was like uh, really unbelievable. But I showed like where I come from. Like I was like, oh my God, look at the napkins. They're they're cloth. <laughs> <laughs> How many did you take? I, <laughs> I, I, they're on his mom's table as we speak. I swear <laughs> to God, it would, uh, it's real living. <laughs> Quincy Jones produced the, the show Mad TV. I was on. They invited, they invited me, uh, us to his house, the cast members of the show in Bel Air, and I honestly got in his backyard and went, "You got a pool? <laughs> 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 you got an in-ground pool? I always wanted to be the first guy in LA to have an above-ground pool." <laughs> but anyway, so. And, and the guy went on to have his own TV show and a real successful, brilliant chef. Uh, you still good. talking about me? Yeah. Thank you so much. You're too kind. Too it, ain't, kind. it ain't me. No, you're uh, too kind. Rocco the Spirit. Hey, man. How What's are you, up, bro? So nice to be here. Thank you so much. And it's nice to see you doing well and in this beautiful set and the best kitchen on radio and television simultaneously. Now, do you feel it's a mistake uh, to put Mike in that kitchen? Do you think it's like a... I'm a little concerned because he guy seems the infectious. <laughs> I, that's what I'm just worried. There are open sores on his face and I'm uh. concerned. <laughs> They're not gonna... open, the sores. Well, are they? they are now. They <laughs> weren't when we started. But, uh... <laughs> well, why don't you, you know, you, so you're the kind of chef you could make anything out of anything. Make like an open sore sauce. Mm. <laughs> An open sore sauce. Yes, that works right. Just like Otta. Otta. Yeah. He's an Otta. Uh, yeah, if you go? could just drip a little bit of that oozing pus <laughs> See, into that's the what meatball I gravy. Think, that's what Thank I think is yeah, happening. Yeah. What the no wonder you like the meatballs so much, right? <laughs> Where are you from, Rocco? I'm from Jamaica, Queens. From Queens. Can you believe that? And what did your, what did your parents do? It was, like, it was like the you know, epicenter of the crack epidemic of the 80s. Right. Like, it was awesome and watching what your, all that go What did your old man do? My old man was a cabinet maker. He made furniture, custom furniture. Carpenter. If you know, if you call him a carpenter, oh, he'd start mad, cursing yeah. at you. Right, he's, he's an like, artist. Whoa, 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 hey, Rocco. No, I've met guys like that. Yeah. You're right. Yeah, that's what yeah. they do. Yeah. So he used to, in Italy, he used to move into people's homes, rich people's homes, yeah. and live with them for like six to eight months and make a gigantic piece of furniture. It took, you know, it took a year to make. He really? lived with them. Because you couldn't move this furniture once it was built. Right, exactly. It was built okay. specifically for a space and a home. And uh, that's, he grew up old school, you yeah. know. He now, died when he was 87, three years ago, so. Wow. Yeah, yeah, so he, he's an old school Italian craftsman. Is he from Italy? Yes. Originally? Yes, what from brought him San Nicolo Baronia. And he would go back there to work. Like, what brought him to Queens? Why did he come over here? Uh, his wife, my mother. Oh, okay. She, came she was here. American. Yeah. Oh, no, okay. no, she, she came here um, three years before him from the same town. They really? were like uh, childhood sweethearts. Wow. They lived right next to each other in these little attached houses. And she came here and um, got the green card and visa all settled. You know how they do that? Yeah, right? sure, yeah. They call me from Italy. They call me <laughs> my cousin, my aunt, my uncle. She called me. So they called her, and then she had to call him. And, uh, and she had my sister in the meanwhile. Now, so now you have yeah. one sibling? Two siblings, Two an siblings. older brother, older sister, yes. And now, do you speak fluent Italian then, I guess? Or, not really. Or no, not really, okay. No they, married, they made sure Io you were Americanized. Io parlo in dialetto <laughs> napolitano. <laughs> Wait, why you? Whoa, come on, who? Were they Napoli down? Yeah, Napoli down. They're from Naples, right? Yeah. That's where my, my whole family's from, a village. Moe Chandon. My whole family's from a village of above Naples called Alta Vila, right? Okay, sure. And my, my Uncle Tommy went back to visit them in, like, 1998, and he brought a video camera, and I found that I'm not from royalty, surprisingly enough. <laughs> they, really? He found our cousins living in a mud hut. A mud wow. hut. They had like three teeth. At least oh, they had the mud. On. Yeah, and yeah. they looked. Some people at, don't have mud. They looked at the video camera like it was a spaceship. They never saw a video. <laughs> camera. This is 1998. My cousin Eugenio. We have this on tape. <laughs> he looks at the camera. And goes. <laughs> but it's there like was the, fresh. It's like the Coke bottle falling from the sky <laughs> and the gods. Uh, you know, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And it, but there was fresh fish. He was a fisherman. Fresh fish and mozzarella all over the place. And fr- and he Chickens said, in the backyard. Food was unbelievable. Yeah. Uh, but uh, yeah, they live a different lifestyle. I don't. I don't think that my uncle in San Nicolo Baronia, By the way, it's a 600, uh, 600 people in that town, eighteen hundred homes. Because every <laughs> time, every time they have an earthquake, they screw the government they for another out. house. Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah they, they make a new house. They get money from the government. You know, in, in the Italy, know how to move. They know how to. They had know how to move money, and they know how to move <laughs> a lot of things. Bodies. Yeah, exactly. Uh, but so, so what? Are, I mean, you got the, you got the real heritage, and what, what you get you interested in cooking? I actually have an Italian passport. Isn't that bizarre? No, yeah. I, I believe Italian it. Passport. I'm sure you've traveled there many times. I didn't times. have to exchange drugs or sex for it. It was, like, <laughs> totally legit and amazing. Uh, what got me into cooking? It had to be my mom, right? She cooked 
Like your yeah, mom yeah. cooked crazy awesome See, food all the time. I must be a lazy bastard because I was fine with just eating it. <laughs> I, I wish I had that situation. Uh, My sister uh, grew up in the 70s. She didn't cook. So you had a sister and a mom both spoiled the crap out of you, right? Right. Yeah, absolutely. I didn't have that my, my sister's a, a great cook, too. But my mother is, I'd love for you to meet her one day because she really totally, is. She's totally. an extraordinary cook. Like, I, I mean, she, and she doesn't know how, she couldn't know how to tell you how she made something. I love she that. She just improvises it. And she goes, I don't know what's in this, you know. A little bit of this, a little bit of that. That's <laughs> right. what my mom used to say. Yeah, 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 yeah. This, a little, I don't know. Why are you asking me so many questions? Yeah, and it's just, it's unreal when it comes out, you know. And I really, when I moved to L.A., I was like homesick for it. And my, totally get it. My first birthday in Los Angeles, she sent me 12 homemade Sicilian pizzas and bubble wrap. Oh, the UPS that's... guy got to my apartment <laughs> in North Hollywood. <laughs> my, my apartment was crumbs and bubble wrap for the next two weeks. Uh, so now, how do you get? So how do you go from that to like opening a restaurant? Like like that restaurant? Was that your first restaurant, Union Pacific? Uh, Union Pacific was my third restaurant as an owner, and uh, I got. I'll tell you how I got into the business. Um, I was 11. Love Gun comes out. And these guys are clever. <laughs> Kiss in the '70s, right. super clever. There was a gun inside the album. Right. I was talking. I was talking to to uh, these guys. Where are they? Oh, yeah. they're not here now. Uh, the band, and right. they they have a vinyl disc. And, and back then it was all vinyl. So there was an actual gun inside the the album. It's and hilarious. I saw that gun. I had to have it. But the the album was nine bucks. Wow. And um, so I shopped for Mrs. Adams. I made about fifty cents a day doing that. I shined shoes in the park in Kings Park. I made about you know fifty cents a day. So I couldn't afford it. I asked my mom for money. She's like, I'm not go. But those are the devils. I'm not giving you money to buy this shit. <laughs> and you wanted this rock uh, album. Go go to work. Uh, I was eleven. And my God, she should have been a rock critic too. My God. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. I love Kiss. Thank you. Yeah, for no, that to I me. Do like, so. They're one of my favorite. We all love them, yeah. but I, you got your Italian grandma. You got her mother. So, I, so I, I go to work. I then literally the next day I look for work. I end up in a pizzeria. I fall in love with the business that day. I never, I never stopped working in the restaurant business since 11 years old, 1979, um, in Jamaica Queens, and one wow. restaurant after another after another. And that was even before I realized cooking was interesting. Right. Like, oh. I was just in love with the business of it. Ah. You know, just the hospitality part. You must have had tremendous success before that because I saw Union Pacific was a lot of money in that joint. It was a gorgeous Union Pacific was restaurant. Really beautiful. It had like Thank little you. brooks with bridges going over <laughs> it. Right. You know, you walk through a water, a water wall. Right. I mean, yeah, how does yeah. it look I got when I was taking a dump in the urinal? <laughs> <laughs> Which is kind of a joke. Me and my cousin. Said. No, no, no. It was so like uh, really Serene nice, and, and the food was amazing. Thank you so much. Yeah. That was a really good time for me as a chef. It was a very special moment. Lots of great people working with me. About twenty guys in the kitchen really put their heart and soul into everything they made. The hours of a chef, man. I worked. I washed pots. It was my first job in a kitchen in Jersey. I was a and dishwasher too. Did you? I mean, did you yeah. notice the chef? I was going to ask you. Does this guy talk? Or uh, what does he do here? <laughs> well, Occasionally, John, yeah. Yeah. John, Is he Italian too? John's here in case he gets out of control. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> He's a bouncer. <laughs> nah, he played football. He played no, five years in the ring. He gives me street cred. I know. I saw the ring, and then I realized it wasn't a championship. Ring. Right. Or is it a championship ring? No, it's uh, he doesn't have an. It's a very sore subject. I have, oh. I have runner-up. Glad I brought it up. Two Super yeah. Bowls. He lost two Super Bowls. Yeah, the so runner-up. Second place ring. I mean, the runner-up. It looks ring. cool, but it's... losing two Super Bowls is better than never being in a Super Bowl. I guess. I don't think see. so. I'd rather not really? get there. Really? Right. I feel the same way. It's like I have a lot of one-season <laughs> shows, and I'm almost wondering if I want to. You know, it's like if you can't get to the second season. <laughs> kind of sucks, right? But you were in Mad TV for how many seasons? Two years. I signed for five. Right. I got arrested and thrown in jail. So they, I, I read that book. Yeah. It was a good one. I, that, By the way, I'm a, a chapter in this book, Crash and Burns. Very good. Two years was my thing. I was a, I was a carpenter for two years, actually. I oh. was a longshoreman for two years. And I was on Mad TV for two years, uh, a sitcom for two years. I made movies for two years. The Stern Show was eight and a half years, so that was like, forget it. Is two years almost up here? Uh, it's what, over two. Uh, uh, We're it's over, over two. two. Oh, you, you broke the pattern. Stern was eight and a half. Yeah, no, I know. I had to do that. I though. listened for all eight and a half. Yeah. Uh, we got to take a break. We'll come back. I want to hear more about like your career. Cause it's yeah, fascinating man, sure. to me how like, a great chef gets started and everything. And uh, uh, we'll be back after these words. The Artie Lang Show, weeknights on Audience, only on DirecTV.